I have another wool blanket project for you. This time, a sit mat. If you're interested, keep watching. About a year and a half ago, I dug into a stack of wool blankets that I purchased at Value Village, our local thrift store. Took one of them and took a piece of it and turned it into this sit mat. And this sit mat has come with me on a number of my hikes, especially during the winter time, because it's great for laying right on the snow or the wet ground. Keeps me warm and dry, gives me somewhere to keep my gear all organized off of the snow as well. And it's turned out to be quite a useful piece of kit. So I thought, why don't we dig into that old wool blanket we've been using for the other projects and see if we can't make another one. So that's what I've done. Here's the one we're going to be making today. So what we're going to have to do is go backwards in time and I'll show you how I made this. Okay, before we actually start building our sit mat, uh, just a few things. A word on materials and a word on trying to decide what size you want to make it in. So this is the sit mat that I've been using now for about, well, not quite two years, but quite a while now. I made it for myself out of a green blanket and some green Kadura type material uh, that I had picked up at a fabric store. And it's a good size. How big is this one? So I'm running about 27 inches and not quite 40 inches in that direction. Uh, oh, by the way, I don't know if you can see that on camera. That's one of those live and learn situations right there. I had a small wood stove out in the woods one day. I had a pot of water on. I took the pot off. I didn't want to lay it on the dirt, so I thought, oh, I can lay it on a blanket. It's not going to harm the blanket. A little did I remember just how much soot you can get off of one, so I wasn't able to remove that, but that's okay. It doesn't harm the thing at all. Uh, so this is the one that I've made. Now, I'm basing the one that we're going to make today on this one, but it is going to be a little bit smaller, and I'll show you the reason why. So let me get rid of this one. So what I had to do was find some waterproof or at least water resistant material that I could use for the base. And I wanted to make this project as inexpensive as possible. I was already using a $3 wool blanket from the thrift store and I wanted to find another piece of material that didn't cost much more than that. So at the same thrift store, I found this little garment bag and um, it's, I opened it up and it's a rubberized nylon. I, it's not the highest quality material in the world, but for this project it's going to work just fine. So I decided to go with this because it was, I think, two or maybe even three dollars. I'm not quite sure. It was very inexpensive. So I brought it home and I cut the back off of it and got the biggest square out of the back that I can get. So that's what I have here. And this is going to be the determining factor for how big the the mat is going to be. So this one is going to end up smaller than the green one that I had made for myself, but it's still plenty big to sit on and, uh, you know, be comfortable on when I'm out in the woods. So all I needed to do then was take the wool blanket, which you can see underneath it, measure a corresponding size piece of wool that will be sewn to the, the other piece of material. And that's just about it. And I say just about because here's where you have to decide if you want to put an insulating layer in. So I am going to put an insulating layer in between the wool and the nylon. And I'll show you what I'm going to use. So again, staying with the concept of being very inexpensive, I went to the dollar store and I picked up it's Reflectix, but it's not quite the same as Reflectix you're going to find at home hardware. But it's a Reflectix type material, and this is one of those windshield sun reflectors. I think it cost me $2. Now, this is longer than my project is going to be, but because of the dip here that you would normally wrap underneath your rear view mirror in the car, it's not quite wide enough. So I'm going to take a few minutes to get two pieces out of this, which will approximate the same size as the pad's going to be. And then I'm going to tape them together with some aluminized duct tape that uh, will hold it together. Now, I'm showing you this now because, of course, this is going to go inside of the project before we close one of the ends up. And I'll explain that more in a minute. But you may choose not to use something like Reflectix. And there are a few options you could use. I would recommend, well, in my original blanket, this one, I use True Reflectix that I got at home hardware, and it's not too thick. There are some lessons learned from putting this together with Reflectix, which I'll share as we get to the point of closing that the other one up. 
But if you don't want to use Reflectix because you don't feel like it's traditional enough or it's, uh, you don't think it's necessary, you don't have to. You can go with just the wool blanket and just the pad and this thing will roll up. Well, let me just show you how small this would roll up without anything in the center. And this is not tightly rolled, but you can see that's a small, narrow piece of material that you could strap to the bottom of your pack. You could probably fold it in half and put it inside your pack if you don't want to strap it to the outside. But uh, I find that it's much nicer to have that bit of insulation on the inside. Now, another word on materials. I am using a wool blanket and a piece of rubberized nylon for my base layer. But if you're thinking you'd like to make yours much more traditional, then by all means go with a waxed canvas or an oil cloth, some type of treatment on canvas. And uh, you can make something that looks very traditional and still be very functional. Of course, you're adding to the weight of the overall project more than because the canvas is going to weigh more than this nylon does. Another option is, is if you want the extra insulation, you could always go with two layers of wool blanket. There's no, nothing restricting you from doing that. So I just wanted to throw out a few options. By the way, if you're interested in purchasing one of these sit mats in a more traditional wool blanket and canvas combination, I have a friend, Rob Young, who has a business known as the Crafted Woodsman. And Rob makes and, and his wife make and sell these things. And I'll put a link to his Facebook page in the show notes under this video so that you can go and see uh, what he has to offer. He does make a number of very traditional things, everything including backpacks, shoulder bags, spice kits, a whole range of things that you may find of interest. Uh, that's for somebody who may not find themselves at all crafty. This is really, as I mentioned already, this is going to be a very simple project. So what do we have to do? Well, I have my material. Yeah, I have to put the rubberized side. So what I'm doing now, as I lay this out, as at the, when it's all said and done, this is going to be inside of the, of the sit pad. So this is the rubberized side. This is the outside. So right now, I'm putting them together so that the outside, the eventual outside, is inside. So in other words, you sew it together inside out. You can see I've got a little bit of a mark on one end here from my magic marker, so I want to hide that away anyway. So I'm going to sew this together inside out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew around three sides. And then I'm going to stop. I'm not going to close this end because before I close it up, I have to insert my Reflectix or whatever insulating layer you're going to use. I'm going to show you a little trick that, uh, well, there are a couple of options for when you, when you get to this end, depending on what you want it to look like and how much work you want to put into it. But for, and for the moment, I'm going to just sew these two pieces together on three sides, and then we'll come back and go to the next step. Okay, here's where we are so far. I have the wool blanket sewn to the piece of nylon. This is still inside out, so you're looking at the rubberized portion of the nylon and the wool blanket. Fortunately, the wool blanket is the same on both sides. If you had something that had a pattern on it that you wanted to have show at the end, make sure that when you're at this point, that pattern is hidden on the inside so that when you fold it out, that pattern uh, then becomes exposed on the outside. So I have three sides sewn. Little pro tip here, when you're finished sewing, you can see how it came to a point. Trim off the edge at an angle, as close to a 45 or ang angle, because when you turn it inside out, what happens is that point will obviously turn inside out and you'll get a big bunching in the corner. By cutting that angle off, it lays flatter in the four corners. So there's the three sides done. I have behind me my piece of Reflectix, now trimmed to the right size to go inside. So what I need to do is turn this inside out. And I want to show you one more thing. First, I'll turn it inside out. It takes a minute to push all the corners out. Good. Okay, there's 
what I wanted to show you. If I hadn't cut that at the 45 degree angle, it would have been all bunched up like this inside. So it's just a little, makes it look a little neater. It's not absolutely necessary to do that, but it does make it look a little neater. Now, at the open end, you have two options. I'm going to try one, different from what I did the last time. If it doesn't work, I can go back to the way that I had done it on my first project. And that is, uh, I had sewn around the corner here just a little bit. And the reason I had done that is because when you turn it in right side out, it wants to fold in on itself. It's already doing so right here. It's folding in. And all I really want to do is continue that right across the whole end of it and then sew right through all those layers. Now that's the trouble. I'm, ha um, I'm ha wondering if this is going to work with this sewing machine is will the sewing machine go through two layers of blanket plus what will end up being two layers of the fabric as well, of the waterproof fabric. If I find that it's jamming up, then I'll just undo the threads to that point. And what I'll do then, and what I did on the first one, is I'll sew in about halfway on either side, so that, or a third, I guess, so that I only have a small opening left. And uh, then I'll turn everything inside, or sorry, not turn everything inside out. Then I'll put the reflectix in. It'll mean rolling it up, putting it in, and flatten it out once you're inside. But then I'll only have that small section to hand sew, and uh, then that hand sewing will be, well, hidden more or less. It's not absolutely perfect, but that's how it's, it's done. So once again, what I'm going to do is put my reflectix inside, roll those edges in, sew them, and then there's one more trick I want to show you before we finish the project off that'll make a huge difference when you go to use it. All right, so here's what happened. I tried that method of rolling the ends in all the way across and then pinning it and sewing it. I couldn't get it to work properly, so I re reverted back to what I had done on my first project, which was to sew across till about that point. So you can see I left about one third of the end of it open, and then I rolled the uh, reflectix up slid it inside and unfolded it and by the way I put shiny side up so it was facing the wall so uh, the reason for that is I believe that's the best way for this reflectix to work is shiny side up under the wall uh, that does create an issue what I want to talk about and then I had to hand sew that closed uh, to get it finished and it it looks okay I mean it's yeah, it looks okay. I can't say it's the best job I've ever done on work like this, but I'm the one that's going to be sitting on it, so I'm not too concerned about how it looks, I guess. Now, here's one thing about working with Reflectix, if you're going to use it as an insulating material in something like this. Reflectix is very slippery on the aluminized surface, so with the wool on top of that slides around. And what I learned from doing my first wool sit mat was that I sat on it and I could feel the wool just you know moving all over the top of the sit pad so I decided at that point that I was going to sew lengthwise and crosswise to hold it in place so I did the same thing for this mat I'm going to show you how it turned out because I may do something yet with it so you can see I sewed lengthwise right down the center of the mat and twice at the third points crosswise across the the width of the mat and now it's it's doesn't slide around on top of itself which makes it a lot more stable now you will note that of course the thread that matches the wool blanket is now showing through on the other side so what I will likely do I, I consider leaving it and if you don't mind that then it, you know leave it alone but what I will likely do will just run a black marker right down the thread and then turn it all black now because I've punched so many holes through there with with the uh, the needle and the sewing machine I will probably spray the bottom of this with some type of protector or I could wax it just with a you know a sealing wax and use a hairdryer or whatever to heat it up and seal it in very traditional very functional but if you want to use a spray more uh, a silicone based thing to uh, waterproof it you can do that as well um, you know unless you have an absolutely waterproof material which is a little bit hard to come by unless it's gum rubber then uh, you're not you're always going to get some leaking through so Spraying it once in a while isn't a bad thing, especially where there's needle holes through it. Okay, that's all there is to it. Let me just roll this up. 
There it is, all rolled up. Nice size sit pad, not too big, not too small. Something that I can use on the ground to keep my butt dry, keep it warm in the snow. Do you know another use I found for it? If you have a hammock chair, put this in the hammock chair and it's a great insulator for your back. I suppose you could throw it right in the hammock. It's not a bad thing to lay on the ground underneath a sleep pad. If you want a little protection, a little bit more insulation underneath your sleep pad, put this under the upper body. It should keep the sleep pad from sliding around too much on the ground. Yeah, useful, simple, but I will tell you, it does take some time. Not just in the measurement and cutting, but also the lining up the pinning. You do have to pin <laughs> that line that, uh, that goes through the reflectix. If you don't, the wool blanket's gonna slide all over it as you try to sew, and you're gonna get bunched up areas. So do take the time to pin it before you sew it. Okay, that's all there is for this project. A simple wool blanket project, another one. I still have a few pieces of wool blanket left from that one I got at the thrift store. And I still have a few projects, some that I came up with, a few that viewers have suggested. And that's what I wanna open up to you again. Do you have any projects you'd really like to see me make with this wool blanket? And by the way, if I run out, I'll get another wool blanket and we'll do some more projects. If you have any ideas, put them in the show notes below. If you have any comments on this project or any of the other projects I've done or on anything you'd like to see me do on this channel, put those in the, in the comment section as well. All right, that's all I have for this video. Get out and explore. Take that path, let's travel. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.